Praise Lord, through life. We are under Christ, who's my life. Dope with all honor to his great man, number one prophet, walking, the great mother walker. I'm the one to do. Then we're going to go down to the family They call the family walk to the other book. There'll be Kenya, Margarita, there'll be Smiley, Evangelist Rogers, and Evangelist Shallow. Give them a hearty amen as they come up and share the word of God. Praise the Lord, say, <laughs> well, of course, but God is good, amen. <laughs> Sometimes you got to give God ugly praise, amen. I give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of my faith, yes. amen. I love him so much, he is yes. good, amen. Yes. Oh, all. Thank amen. God, I give him double honor to God's true prophet, Bishop Prophet Ace Walker. First leg lady, Mother Walker, Man. I give them double honor and then overworthy of it. Amen. Yes. And I give honor to all the preachers in the household of faith. Man. I give honor to uh, 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 anyone who is striving towards <laughs> towards the mark, the prize of high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, following after prophet. Amen. Uh, I hope that you have your your notepad and your pen or pencil, and you have a King James Version Bible, and we're going to get into the meat of the word, and I pray that it doesn't offend you enough to run away, but it offends you enough to run you to God. Amen. <laughs> and we're going to start at John, the uh, first chapter, <clears throat> or main text, John 1, 1 and 2, and it reads, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. Yes. The same was in the beginning with God. Yeah. And we're going to go to Second Timothy, the third chapter. Very important scripture. Amen. Second Timothy, third chapter, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God yeah. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. Somebody got to be righteous. Now, you can't, oh, here we under grace. And it, no, the devil is a lie. You got to live a holy and sanctified life just like God. He came down to set an example of that. Amen. And before I get over to the panel, the uh, lesson focus is importance of the Bible as the as as the inspired word of God, importance of following the scriptures as instructed to develop a lifestyle which is acceptable unto God. And I turn the panel over to Benjamin Rogers. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Getting all glory and praise to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Show the head of our lives. Double entrance into the Lord's infinite honors to God's true end times apostle and prophet Prophet H. Walker into the beautiful memory and legacy of First Select Lady Mother Walker. I give equal honors, giving honors to all the preachers of the gospel, friends, family, and friends, greeting you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Truly, it is a blessing to be again in God's true remnant. Acts 2.38 Church. Apostle Peter established on the day of Pentecost, the devil is a liar. You know, I'm a little hoarse, but that's all right. Um, it's a situation where, you know, these wonderful texts have been brought out uh, brought to us from the prophet of God who gets the word of God from God, you know, not from T. Jakes, not from somebody's bank account, not from somebody's inspirational uh, thing where they're trying to win friends and influence people and come out with some words to make you dig deep down into your pockets to pay them. Basically, you're paying them to help you go to hell. And it's a sad situation when that is the case, when we have the true prophet of God with us right now here today, Prophet H. Walker, here at True Light Pentecost Church, Spartanburg, South Carolina, crying aloud and sparing not, Man. preaching the truth of God's word for his soul to come out of darkness into God's marvelous light. The truth of God's word, which is Genesis, Revelation, all of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation uncompromised, the King James Version, which is the truest translation of the Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic writings. You know, you're not going to find the truth of God's Word in those false Bibles, those NIVs, those uh, newly created, new world translated, this, that, and the other. They're taking out the deity of Jesus Christ. They're taking out 
Jesus' part as God Almighty in the flesh, just to confuse you, just to keep you in a state of sin, never knowing the truth of God's word. But we have these blessed texts, which were brought out, the main text, St. John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, explaining to, it's already been read, but it's explaining to the people that God is one God. God is the Word. You can't separate the Word from God. God and His Word are one. If you disobey the Word, you don't follow the Word, you don't like the Word, you want to disagree with the Word, try to rewrite the Word, then you have become an enemy of God. You are trying to call God a liar, telling Him that His Word is not true, that you don't believe it. You're the created being. How can you try and tell God what He should and should not do? God has heaven or hell to put you in. Obedience to the Word of God, the true Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, uncompromised, rightly divided by the man of God, is going to get you into heaven. Disobedience to the man of God, to the Word of God, is going to get you immediately into the lake of fire and judgment. And we see that in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You have to have works, good works, in order to see God's face in peace. Amen. You can't just get water baptized, and, and even if you are baptized the correct way, in the name of Jesus Christ, you still have to live a holy and sanctified life unto God. Women, you still have to put that veil on your heads when you leave your house, when you go into public and when you go into church service. I don't care what the false preacher tries to tell you. You have to have a veil on your head according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. You have got to wear a dress. You've got to wear a skirt. A long dress or a long skirt is modest apparel. 1 Timothy chapter uh, 2 and 9, 1 Peter chapter 3 and 3. You have got to do these things. These are basic things in presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So you have got to be taught how to live holy. You can't just get water baptized and think that's it. Oh, okay, I can skate and, and, and fly my way into heaven. No, you have to now sacrifice your living body in this present world in order to see God's face in peace, but you won't know how unless you're correctly taught Amen. the Word of God from the prophet of God. Amen. Come to True Light Pentecost Church as soon as you can. You can get on your pathway, the straight and narrow pathway to salvation as we all did. Pray rest with the Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ, who my life, the life of the prophet, this is Walker. I love you, Mother Walker, our time is June. I want to thank God for our panel tonight because we are dealing with very important texts. Um, you know, a lot of people say that they believe in God, but a lot of people don't realize that if you really believe in God, then you have to believe in the Bible as well. And so we're, you know, explaining, like it says in first I'm sorry, in St. John that, you know, the word is God. Without God, you know, without the Bible, you can't have God and vice versa. You can't say that you believe in God and you don't believe in his Bible and you don't believe in his instruction. And like it says in our subtext that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So even if Peter wrote it, even if Paul wrote it, it was approved by God. If it wasn't approved by God, then it wouldn't be in the Bible. And so like it says in Deuteronomy 30 and 15, you have a choice you can make. So if you believe in God, then you have to choose to also believe in the Bible. If you don't believe in the Bible and you don't obey what's in the Bible, then you obviously do not believe in God. Like it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you have faith and you actually believe in God, then you're going to believe in his word. If God told you you have to wear a veil on your head, if God told you you have to wear a skirt, if you're a woman, then you have to do what God says because it's in his word. His word is the doctrine and we follow the doctrine in true life. We don't just wake up and decide what we're going to do. We go based off of God, God's word, which is the Bible. We don't necessarily... Um, you know, choose what we do or how we choose to follow God. We follow God the way that it was commanded to follow God, which has been broken down to us by prophet. And that's the bottom line is some people are in these false churches and they're following what they believe the Bible is or they're following these NIV or whatever translation there is out there now. But we're following the King James Version, which like it has been brought out is the closest translation you can get to the Hebrew text. You shouldn't be reading any other Bible because it's going to lie to you. It's going to tell you things that are not of God. But the King James Version Bible is going to tell you exactly how God intended it to be. And that's how we need to follow God the way God intended it to be. His word is his word. You can't change it. You can't modify it. You can't make it say what you want it to say. And that's the issue 
saying. with these translations. They're trying to make it say what they wanted to say, but God already said what he wanted to say. God already wrote it in how he wanted to write it. So how can you explain, how can you change what God wanted it to be? How can you change it to something that you want it to be? It's God's word, not yours. And pray my shit to the Lord. Praise the Lord to the church. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the blessed preacher. Let's go on forth and Lift this great God up who's revealed name to the New Testament church. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one true God. I give him all praise, honor, and glory. And thank and praise God for God's true prophet. Only one prophet, prophet Richard A. Walker. He's a lovely helpmaker, a lovely mother walking in loving memory. And all the thanks to God and true life family. I greet all the YouTube viewers once again in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank God. Um, you know, for holiness, um, like the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You know, if you want to see God in feet, peace, you have to live a holy and sanctified lifestyle, like the Bible says, in this present world. What is the present world? Right now. <laughs> you know, but the Bible says, uh, you know, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. So when you hear the word of God, then you are held accountable. You are responsible. And just like when you get saved, your life no longer belongs to you. You've been bought with a price. Your life belong to God. You know, and I believe what well, Paul said, I'm a prisoner of yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus. Yeah. You know, and, you, and when you wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus, you know you're on your way to heaven. Yeah. And that's what a saved person, that's the that's the goal. Go to heaven. It ain't about this earthly journey. You know, pain, heartache, this come against you, that come against you. This one don't like you. This one don't love you. But if, if God love you, <laughs> what what good Amen. what difference do it make? That's why the Bible says, you know, the true church, we might be small in number, but we mighty in Christ Jesus. And thank God for the lesson focus of importance of the Bible as the inspired word of God and importance of following the scriptures as instructed to develop a lifestyle which is acceptable unto God. And I believe uh, Romans 12 and 1 presents your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And just like I started from the beginning... If it's not holy, it's not acceptable. And like the Bible, like he mentioned, Paul mentioned, that's the least thing that you can do. You know, after God, look what he did at Calvary. <laughs> you know, who who would have, you know, for for pe people that hated him, you know, you know, who, 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 who you, <laughs> it's difficult to give up your life for somebody that loves you, less known people that right. rebelling right. against you, turning their back on you. Right. I mean, like he showed his love for you, but he was responsible, you yes. know, and that's what, a leader does, you know, if he's responsible, then he's going to do what he have to do, you know. And that's why I thank God every day for profit, because he's a true man of God. Amen. You know what, what Paul say, I'm not trying to return to you all the counsel of God, you know. And we are foot soldiers. We are under profit. Yes. So if we are under profit, like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. <laughs> Be glad about it. And thank God for um, the uh, St. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and, and the same, and the same was in the beginning with God, you know, and like, I believe, like Prophet mentioned, I'm going to pass it on down, it's like a circle, you know, where do it start, where do it end at, you know, and that's God, you know, in, in his deity, you know, he, he, he his, his life was never started, and his life will never end. You know, he's been here forever. The Bible says, I'm not present. I believe what he say, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I started it, and I'm going to finish it. And that's the thing about life. Life always will come back in full circle. And that's why the Bible mentions about, you know, reaping to the Spirit. Because when you reap under the Spirit, you reap under God, it's, it's going to catch up with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the Bible say blessings overtake you. And that's why this world is in the condition that it's in, because they reaping unto the flesh what they want to do, what Satan wants them to do. And they come back full circle. So pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. God is worthy and worthy of praise. Give him all the praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, the one true God of both testaments. All honor, double honor. The prophet H. Walker, the first black mother walker. The true man, only God, and Jesus. We the words that esteem him very highly for a labor's sake. Give honor to your hierarchy, honor to one that is due. Also to the love and memory of a beloved Mother Smith. Let's give the preachers a hand for the preached word. The subtext and main text been brought out, which leads me to uh, Isaiah 30 and 8. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, 
and the word was God. The yeah. same was in the beginning with God. Second Timothy 3 and 16, all scriptures man. is given by inspiration of man. No, by inspiration of God. Yeah. Yes. Shakespeare didn't have nothing to do with this. Hallelujah. That Sodomite King James didn't have nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. It was inspired by the word of God. Right. He was in charge of translating the Bible. That's all. As the preacher brought out, it's not about them false versions. Mm -hmm. Chapter 30, uh, Isaiah 30 and 8. Now go write it before them in the table and note it in the book. They may be for the time to come forever and ever. That's talking about the Bible. Right. Again, God gave the commandments to Moses and it was written in stone. That's symbolic. In other words, it's forever. But in, um, that was under the Old Covenant. But in the New Testament, we have uh, the New Testament Bible. Praise God. That's what he said. It's for the time forever. And as prophet teaches us, the Greek word for book is Bible. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So, in, in, in other words, you can't get around it. The Bible, you need the Bible. The King James Version Bible, as it was brought out. Man. Not the... ESV, Amplified Bible, yes. the NIV, I can keep going on and on and on till the cows come home or till the rapture comes first, whichever one catches up first. But they do that on purpose. They take Jesus out and put the devil in. That's the, that's the problem with so-called Christianity as we bring out every panel. 98% of Christianity believe in the Trinity. Where is it in the Bible? Amen. The Bible says you have not learned Christ. Right. You haven't learned that from the Apostles' Doctrine. You haven't learned that from Prophet H. Walker. Great. Hallelujah. Where you learn how to drink, how to smoke, how to be a whore, how to be a, a sodomite. You didn't learn that from the Bible. Hallelujah. That's why we're here to preach the whore out the church and to preach the sodomite out of the church. That's Bible. Amen. To preach immoral character out the Bible. Yes. We have to have the character of Christ. And we got the mind of Christ, we have to have the character of Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Without the character, without the mind, you can't have the character. That's why the Bible says you must renew your mind. Don't be conformed to this world. You must change your mind. After you right. baptize in Jesus' name, you walk in the newness of life. Romans 6 and 4. It says it for a reason. Some go down a uh, dry devil and come up a wet devil. But that's, that's, that's between them and Jesus. But you must submit to Acts 2.38, Acts 8.16, Acts 10.48, Acts 19.5. Acts 19 and 5. Praise God. All baptized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God himself was baptized by John the Baptist or John the Baptizer or the Immerser. You can't get sprinkled like they do in the Roman Catholic Church and the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No. You got to be immersed. You got to go up under the water in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We just want to encourage you that if you say you saved and that you're a Christian, you got to follow this whole book. Yes, man. You can't just take what you want and serve God the way you want to because it said in the beginning was the Word yes. and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Yes. So if you got the Word deep down in your heart, right. then you got God. Yes. But, you know, I was just thinking where your actions is where your heart is. Amen. And if you really want God, it's going to show. Oh, yeah. It, it, that what's in the heart is going to come to the light. Amen. So if you really forgot, you will follow the prophet. You will run here just like I did. Amen. 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 You got the right spirit. You're going to stay in church. And you ain't going to just, when prophet leave, you're going to act a, a different type of way. No, you're going to be the same way Amen. as if prophet was here. Amen. Amen. So uh, it, it's about being for real. Let's be for real. That's not be, that's not play. No, let's be for real. Because Amen. heaven and hell is definitely for real. Amen. And Bash Rogers. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you know what? You will not hear truer words than you have to receive from Prophet Walker and True Light. You know, we're not here trying to uh, get your pockets, try to get your money for our kids, grandkids, and tell you lies and, and fables and all kinds of things right. that God said not to do. Uh, trying to give you an okay to do those things. No, we're not here for that. We're here to, to try and save a soul, that a soul may be able to come out of darkness into God's marvelous light, that a soul may be able to identify 
what is the truth of God's word and what is a lie because it's so many lies out there so many hypocrites so many people out there wolves in sheep's clothing we can identify them hallelujah the prophet showed us as Elder Smiley just said you know by how you act what you do by their fruit you shall know them not by what smooth words they say not by all those things you know with uh, good words and fair speeches they speeches they deceive the hearts of the simple you know those that are trying to know the word of God and get sidetracked by some smooth talking charlatan that'll tell you it doesn't take all that once saved always saved Christ paid it all at Calvary now you can do anything you want to do smoke drink fornicate be a harlot wear short skirts and dresses pants you know God didn't make pants for women you know nobody did but man that's the devil's doing you know those types of things are, are sultry they're sensuous those are things that are of the earth those are things that keep you far away from God you know why do women wear pants what in the world do you have to wear pants for? You don't have the same appendage that a man has for which pants were, were designed. You know, my goodness, when you look at the signs on the bathroom, you know, designed there by someone who knew and understood that many people cannot read, cannot write, but they know signs and symbols. If you're trying to find a bathroom, you look up and you see a sign over a door that has a dress on, you run to that bathroom, female, not you want to be female males, you know, keep yourself in order. Stay out of the women's bathroom. You're not a woman. You are a freak against nature. You are an imposter. You are trying to be something that you are not. Look in the mirror. It will identify exactly what you are. If you want to find a man's bathroom, men, real men that are out there, you're going to look up and you're going to see a sign with pants on. The identifying factor that this is for a man. So there are no women's pants. There are frilly looking men's pants that women put on and are in abomination unto God. You know, you have to live it God's way. You have to live your day-to-day -day life God's way. You know, I saw something not too long ago where a woman on TV was saying that she lives any kind of way she wants to, parties and all that on Saturday so that she can come to church on Sunday. That's foolishness. That's ridiculous. That's the false church. That's the false way. God does not have step. 99 and a half percent will not do. You cannot play and, and, and date this, the devil and expect that Jesus is going to accept you on Sunday. He said, take away the noise of thy viols. He's not hearing the sound of your blasphemy. He's not hearing all of that that is not of God. We can't do anything for the truth but by the truth. You know, if God didn't say to do it, we can't do it. If God didn't authorize it, then we cannot continue to do it. God will state what he wants, as was stated earlier. You know, in the Bible, it states everything that God wants, every way that he wants to be pleased, every way that he wants to be served, every way that he wants to be worshipped. He does not want a Christmas tree. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses uh, 1 through 5. He does not want that falsehood. That's of the devil. That's what the devil does in his children to try and anger God to serve Satan. That's all you're doing is serving Satan. He doesn't care what you call it as long as you're worshiping him and not God, not God's way. There is no Easter bunny. There is no uh, Easter egg. There is no uh, resurrection of Tammuz. There is a reincarnation thought to be for Tammuz, the sun god, you know, worshiped and, and, and celebrated 2,000 years before Moses wrote the Torah in the land of Shinar in Babylon. You do not have that connection with Jesus Christ. Why do you want to try and link Jesus to Tammuz? Tammuz is not Jesus, as was brought out in the main text. The Word is God, and God is the Word. From everlasting to everlasting, Tammuz had a birth. Tammuz died at the age of eight years old. God is from everlasting to everlasting, as was brought out. A circle, no beginning of life, no ending of days. This is what God has for us. He wants us to live forever. He programmed man to live forever. Adam and Eve were not supposed to die. But because of disobedience to the word of God, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and death came into the, the scene. Death came on the picture. That's not how God programmed it. There's another death coming for those that are disobedient, that do not want to adhere to the word of God, that hate the word of God and don't count it as a righteous thing, that day of death is coming, but you don't have to die that second death. You don't have to be in the lake of fire burning forever and ever and ever where the worm dieth not and you have no escape. There is no AC 
in hell. There is no cold water in hell. You will be in torments forever, not one second, not a millisecond of relief. If you want that way, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on dancing with Satan. Keep on going to the false church. Keep on going to the Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Episcopalian, AME church. Uh, same type of church that that false demon is in, the, uh, in Georgia. You know, go ahead and go that way. But if you want to be saved the Bible way, come on to true life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks. And um, really quickly, I want to go to Matthew chapter 7. And, you know, the Bible is sent here, like it has been stated before, as a roadmap. Without the Bible, we wouldn't know how to live. People talk about how God is love. God loves you enough to send you a book to tell you exactly how he expects you to be, how he expects you to live. But if we go to uh, Matthew chapter 7, I want to start at verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You know, true light is among that few. You see, we don't necessarily have a ton of people, but if you have a ton of people, if you're in a church with a ton of people, you are in the wrong church, I promise you. Like it's been said, when God was in Calvary, he didn't have a lot of people with him. He didn't have a congregation that was, you know, following him when he went to Calvary. So if you are in a church where everything seems all like uh, happy-go-lucky and everybody is just, you know, there's everybody in, with big old hats on and they're doing this and they're doing that and a, a woman kicks her shoes off and her toenails are painted, like, no, you're in the wrong church. But we're trying to teach you how to make sure you're in the right church. And the way that you are in the right church is, is one, if you examine the leader that you're under. And we, you know, we follow Prophet because he teaches us directly from the Bible. The Bible teaches you how to be acceptable like it says in Romans how to transform your transform your mind how to you know like it says in 2nd Timothy how to correct yourself and prophet has corrected us you know we when people came into the church they didn't necessarily know that they had to wear a veil men didn't necessarily know to you know not necessarily cut your hair women <coughs> didn't know not to wear makeup but we learned that by prophet teaching us outside of the Bible or I should say from the Bible prophet didn't just get up here and tell us what he wanted to tell us the way T.D. Jakes does, Joyce Myers, all these other people that you can look at on YouTube or the TV, they tell you what you want to hear because that's what they they want. They want money. Prophet doesn't teach us because he wants money. He teaches us because he wants to save our souls. He doesn't get up here and tell us every single day, oh, you can get to heaven even if you do this. You can get to heaven even if you wear, your, you wear jewelry or if you wear makeup. No, Prophet doesn't tell you that. Prophet tells you how it is because that's how it is in the Bible. And that's how we're trying to tell you because we love you enough to want to save your soul. If you're out there watching on YouTube, we want to save your soul. It's not necessarily, we're not here to tear you down, but the Bible literally says to correct you, to rebuke the devil, to reprove to tell you what is wrong. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to tell you how to get right. We're not trying to tell you, sitting here trying to tear you down, trying to tell you, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Well, the Bible tells you you can't do this. The Bible tells you you can't do that. God told you you couldn't do this. God told you you couldn't do that. So don't blame prophet. Don't blame us. Don't look at us and try to point finger. The Bible literally tells you what you can and you can't do. Because that's from God. God tells you what you can and you can't do. Don't stand here and try to point the finger at the preacher. Point the finger at the Bible that prophet says all the time. Don't get mad at him. Get mad at the Bible. Get mad at God. Because God is the word. And the word is God. And the Lord. And I thank God for the lesson focus once again. The importance of following the scriptures as instructed to develop a lifestyle which is acceptable unto God. And I thank God for that word uh, develop. You know, you have to um, you have to learn. You have to ha be taught how to serve God. The Bible mentions about the hour come. And now is when the true worshiper must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. It's a different difference between a worshiper and a true worshiper. Only thing you got to do is just look at the true church and look at the false church. False church packed out. Pews filled all up. But look at their lifestyle. And just like the preachers brought out, that's why the Bible mentioned about by their fruit. It's not talking about no apple, no orange. It's talking about a lifestyle. Yes, amen. If you're going to serve God, your lifestyle has to be correct. That's simple as that. Ain't no way of getting around it. All right. You know, if, 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 if you're going to be in holiness, you might as well get happy. All right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I surrender all. All right. You know, because that's the only way that anybody is going to make it. Yes. You, you, we, we can't do it our way. We already done tried that. <laughs> How that turn out? All right.
Right. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out too good. <laughs> and the only thing we gotta do is look at the world. Right. I mean, on drugs, and what's that doing for you? Glory. Well, have you more miserable? Get high today, then you gotta get high tomorrow. Yes. And people so sick, this this fentanyl, they dropping like like flies. Yes. Yes. And they still taking it. Yeah. You know, you got a, a man wanna be a woman and a woman wanna be a man. You know, I mean, just foolishness on top of foolishness, you know, but thank God for holiness. <laughs> and I'd like to turn to second, uh, second Timothy 3 and 16, and it reads, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know, it, it doesn't mention about some, some of the scriptures, a lot of people will, I believe this, but I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe in that that you say you believe. Glory. You know, I believe the Bible mentions about if you guilty in one thing, you 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 guilty in all. Amen. You got to follow all the word of God. That's what it's for. Amen. You know, it's just like you got a map and you trying to get from Spartanburg to Georgia and you go some of the way. Well, you will never get there because you ain't follow all of the way. <laughs> if you want to get to heaven, you got to follow all. You got to follow all of it. Yes. You know, Amen. but. You know, like the Bible say, my people love to have a soul. It's something about, you know, the, the sin nature, you know, and, and, and being influenced. I'd rather be influenced by God yeah. and a prophet and, 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 and somebody that want to be saved, you know. even That's why, the, like Peter say, save yourself from this untoward generation. The soul that you save is your own. You got to save yourself. You can't be worried about uh, mama, daddy, sister, fr brother. Like prophet say, try to... And win friends and influence people. That's not what this journey is about. Amen. You know, we everybody want people to like them. Everybody want people to love them and smile at them and have a good time. You know, but but that's not what this wilderness journey is about. This wilderness journey is about serving God, making God happy. Yeah. When God happy with you, <laughs> what can you do? You know, when you can get on your knees at night and say a prayer and reach to heaven. People don't realize how much of a blessing that is. Yeah. People don't realize, you know, when you driving up the road and that death angel pass you by. Yeah. People don't realize. That's why, you like like the preacher mentioned about looking in the spirit. Yeah. Natural things, that stuff, man, here today and going tomorrow. Yeah. Temporary. Tempor temporary, this ain't going to get you nowhere. It's glory. <laughs> it's about going to heaven. Yeah. I'm so very glad about it. Yeah. Thank you. You said, praise the Lord, I had a great time being in the Lord. I know the devil probably hiding somewhere with black eyes and lumped up everywhere, praise God. You know, Jesus said, if you continue my word, then you shall be my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In other words, when you hear the truth, you have to make a conscious decision whether to follow the truth that you have heard, which brings me to James 1. In 21, one of my uh, favorite scriptures, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, anything of the flesh. He said, lay aside. In other words, don't do it. Man. You can't drink no more. You can't smoke no more. You can't walk funny no more, God forbid. You can't be a lesbian no more. You can't do nothing that the flesh, can't use drugs no more. You can't do nothing of the flesh that the flesh wants you to do. Because you're supposed to be walking in the spirit now. Right. And receive with meekness, uh-oh, with humility. That's the thing. That's the problem today. No one has humility. But Amen. God never sent the word while well, what? A leader. Amen. Way back in the days of Moses, he sent the, the word. But he sent prophet Moses, Amen. the first prophet. In this dispensation time, one prophet is Walker, the la God's last messenger. He sent the word, but he also raised up a prophet. That's Bible, praise God. And we must follow that prophet. That's right. It's an honor and a privilege to be under the tutelage of one of such a great man. Amen. As he said up under the late great Elder Jesse Ross, we sit up under prophet Amen. and learn the word of God. Amen. And receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. So if you're humble and hungry for the word, you accept the word of God. If not, like the Bible said, you the Bible said, whoa. Unto the rebellious children. It's not talking about little kids. It's talking about the church. Grown folks. Grown, and that's the thing. Oh, you can't tell me what to do. I'm, I'm grown. Yeah, grown folks go to hell too. 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we're for. Ain't for the little baby. Who's here? That ain't what it's talking about. Symbolism. That's that's why you must be taught by a true man to God. Again, I thank God for a spiritual leader. Amen. I, I tell you, I, I love him to death. Without him, I wouldn't. He told me how to be a man. He told me how to be a preacher. He told me how to be a father. Praise God. Where can you get that? <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank God for my, and I love my leader just like he loved his pastor. Praise God. Amen. I can't say it enough. Again, the word of God is not to be mocked. You're going to reap what you sow. If you reap, if you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap of the spirit. You sow to the flesh. If you spend all your life abusing the temple, drinking, smoking, fornicating, oh, Lord, help me. You on your death bell, oh, Lord, help me. God said he's going to turn his back. He's going to mock you. That's in the word. Proverbs, the first chapter. Amen. God's not mocked. That's what he mean. You see all these false churches, they're mocking God. Amen. Yes. I dare you. I dare you, Jesus. Where you at? Do you exist? Why this? Why that? Don't ask silly questions. The Bible said it's the doctrine that saves you, not who the God prayed to on the cross. Amen. Why this? Why that? Why God allow little kids to die? It's the doctrine that saves you. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't go falling for the itchy ear message. That's what we're here today, to preach the unadulterated word of God, that you might come out of darkness into God's marvelous light. And God get the glory, not mankind. Amen. 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 Give him a hand. And now for some reason, call up Elder Wagner. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Everyone. I say praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Great God. Yes. We have a great spiritual leader, Prophet Bishop H. Walker. Hallelujah. The greatest. Yes. Um, amen. So having said that, let me give the Lord Jesus Christ. We just yes. love you and praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. We'll give you all honor and praise, Lord yes. God. Yes. Give our God. Yes. Let us be your children. Oh, hmm. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And also double honor to our great prophet, yeah, 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 prophet yeah. Bishop Walker. Beautiful yeah. nickname, Mother Walker. Yeah. All the preachers of the gospel have given us a great panel of powerful hand praise tonight. Yeah. Truly blessed our soul, encouraged us, strengthened us, yeah. Yeah. emboldened us to go further yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just so encouraged. And, um, you know, I was listening to this great panel uh, just come forward. Just had such a great time listening to them. And... You know, we, we're, we're, big, we're better now. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. anytime you hear the word of God, and that's what the panel is talking about. Anytime you hear the word of God, and not just hear it, but allow it to do something inside of you. Change your direction. And God is saying that his word is able to do that if you let it. Yeah. Panel brought that out pretty plainly. Yeah. And I just want to um, say this in, uh, in the book of Psalms uh, 33 and 6. You want to know how important God's word is? I ain't talking about the word on the billboard out there. I'm not talking about that word in uh, the book at school. Fine. Oh, that's great. I'm talking about the word of All God. Right. All right. Uh -huh. All right. Look, in the book of Psalms 33 and 6, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Yes. Are you serious? And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. All right. Well, everything got to come from, come forth through God. And if you're going to come forth through God, you got to do it His way. That's the way the panel says. you got to do it God's way. They came from St. John 1, 1 and 2, in the beginning with the Word. And the Word was made. And the Word was with God, and the yes. Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Oh, I love this. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Mm. So the preacher must... Be clean first. Mm. How you gonna get clean if you, unless you follow the word? All right, then you know, I noticed all of these hypocrite preachers don't follow the word of God. That means they're not clean. Yeah, right. They're not right. Yes. Man. You up there preaching and you don't even know the word of God. Man. Don't follow the word of God. Nope. But you're supposed to be preaching. About what? If you're not preaching the doctrine, notice what the scripture says here in uh, the 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, teachings, and instructions. Yes. How are you going to please God if you don't have 
any concept of the teachings that God has in his Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the panel brought it out. We don't believe in no three, tr no trinity. Yeah. We don't believe that sisterhood don't have to wear a veil. Bible teaches us sisterhood of the don't, the Bible, We don't believe in no jury and makeup come to church trying to show, show what you showing. Yeah. You ain't showing the true church nothing. Yeah. I remember seeing people coming in this church with their hair, jewelry, makeup, trying to impress somebody. Mm. You don't look good to us Hallelujah. because we know the world. Yeah. You go into false churches with your jewelry, makeup, oh, you, oh, they love it. They love it because they're just like you. Mm. Yeah. But when you come into true holiness and get water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and get God's spirit within, you'll find out that these things are not of God. The word teaches they're not of God. Yes. So you're not impressing us. T.D. Right. Jakes Church, Amen. Joyce Meyer Church, Amen. all of y'all churches, you don't impress true life. You think you are, but you're not. So, it, 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 I'm going back now to the lesson focus. Importance of the Bible as the inspired word of God. You've got to believe it with all your heart. Not as one of the preachers brought out some of it. You can't take just some of it and think you're going to make it to heaven. Every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. That's what we live by. Importance of following the scriptures as instructed. Uh-oh. If the preacher ain't instructing the church, the scriptures, it's not a church, not a true church. Man. No, notice what it said. Importance of following the scriptures as instructed to develop a lifestyle yeah. which is acceptable unto God. Not a lifestyle acceptable unto the false church of the world. We don't have nothing to do with the false church of the world. So you must serve God yes. God's way. God's way is only known through and according to his holy word. Ain't that just plain? Ain't that so? It's, it gets so simple, don't it? I heard, and I'm, I'm done, but I heard somebody say one time, said, uh, well, how do we know this is y'all church, the right church? How do you know what church is the right? Well, first of all, the Bible says, seek me early. They that seek me early shall find me. If you're really seeking to find out what is the true church, God going to show you. Yes. Amen. And that's why you're watching tonight. That's why you're watching today. Amen. You didn't know that? Because somebody is seeking, and you found the right church. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Summary. Amen. 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 Now for remarks, let's call up Elder Green. Amen. Amen. Lord saints. Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. 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 Honor and praise my beautiful, blessed wife and holiness. Honor and praise honor and praise is due. Amen. Again, like always, I'd like to thank God for bringing myself and each and every one of my brothers and sisters out of the darkness and the marvelous light. Bringing us to a true global night prophet of the Lord who draws up the mountain with him to teach us God's ways. According to scriptures, Isaiah 2 and 3 says, Many people shall go and say, Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God. He will teach us his ways. That's exactly what Prophet H. Walker does it each and every day for us. He fights for us to the death. He, he battles for us. He's on the, the, the battlefield each and every day for us. We thank you, Prophet. We love you more than anything. Lord Jesus, we pray that we never let you down again, as we've done so many really times and times past. You know, let's give a hand to the panel tonight. You know, their words have been blessed by the Lord Almighty Himself. They've been blessed by the prophet. And they've been blessed by God's true church. So uh, let's not take them lightly. Let's, uh, let's bury them into our hearts. Let's not harden our hearts. So we can move forward towards the, the, the finish line so we can see God's face in peace in the end Amen. one day. Oh, yes. You know, so if we all truly fight the good fight of faith, we can see His face in peace. And that's exactly what we do here every day in true life. We fight the good fight of faith. So each and every one of you are blessed here. Don't take it lightly. This is your calling. Do yeah. not take it lightly. Uh, congratulations to the newlyweds. Um, yes, you know, don't take your calling lightly. You're not here by coincidence. You know, so tonight's scripture is um, by, given to us by prophet. It's John 1 and 2. You know, and it tells you in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. What, what controversy is there about that? Why is there so many people saying that there's a trinity? There's no way that there could possibly be a trinity. Every scripture leads to one God and one God only. So when you're in a Trinitarian church, they're saying that there's three gods. There's three separate personalities and three separate people or, or entities. Okay, so we got Elder Smiley here. We got Elder Brooks. We got Elder Kenyon. 
That's, there's three separate entities, three separate personalities. How is that even possible? It says, the Bible says that there's one God. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, Without controversy, uh, great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifested in the flesh. Point blank period. How can you get around that? Why do you, all you try to come up with a way to get around that scripture? There's no way you can. And uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. All scripture yes. is given by God to write so that we could all live a holy and sanctified lifestyle. Try, stop trying to change the word of God and stop trying to be the devil that you are have already become. Come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Come to true light. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself saved. Get yourself water baptized in Jesus' name. Yeah. And stop fighting the word of God. In Jesus' name, I pray my sweet people. Yeah. 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 And the final word that comes to Daniel Smith. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the 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 Lord. Praise he is his word. You can't separate it. You can't follow part of it. He is all or nothing. God is all or nothing, God. He said, I'd rather be hot or cold, not lukewarm. I'll spew you out my mouth. So if you're not ready to, to commit fully, then don't do it. You've got to give your all, your heart, soul, your mind, and strength to the Lord because you're just wasting your time. You know, you've got, to, you've got to do all of it. And that's why he said, um, uh, when he said, I come back to find if you're obedient in all things, when, uh, one of the, the positive, all is the key here I hear tonight, all, and you can only find all in this word of God. He yes. tells us how to live in the word, not what some preacher said, their own little doctrine. It's here in the Bible. That's why you have to be in your Bible every day. And it's not just in the New Testament or just the Old Testament. You've got to read the Bible in a balanced way so that you can see light upon life, scripture, you know, upon scripture, you can see where prophet is coming from. And you know, if you try to come against him, you can't do it because you can't find nothing wrong with it because he's just preaching the truth. And people don't like the truth. I want you to get it, get it straight. People don't like the truth. But I'm going to say the biggest yeah. truth they don't like is when they, when they tell you the truth about themselves. They don't like the truth about themselves. They don't want you to tell them to get your, their act together. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Are you doing is defiling God's temple? He said, he, he's not going to dwell in an unclean temple. Yes. He is not. Do you understand that? It's not going to change. So how can you say you say it and, and still doing that same thing? It don't, it don't work. You're going to have to repent of that, get some prayer and get anointed oil and get this life and profit among the elders, and then you can get back in good standing because you can't be saved and unsaved at the same time. Does it make any sense? I don't understand that. Because everything I do, I do it all day long, but my mind stayed on Jesus. That's why I say I, I, everything I do is spiritual. Even if I'm in the bathroom cooking everything, I'm, my mind is always on Jesus, what I'm saying. My mind is always on Jesus. Everywhere I go, I know somebody watching me. And that can help somebody be saved just by watching. You don't have to open your mouth. They all watch you and say something different. Maybe they'll see this on church. Maybe they'll come up to me. But they're all, you're always being watched. You know that, right? Everybody watching you. Your kids are watching you. Your boss on the job. Your co-workers. People in the church are always watching. But more importantly, Jesus watches you. So you think you're trying to get somebody something? He's seeing it. Trying to do something in the closet, going way on the other side of town, trying to do something. Oh, Lord, I'm following you over there, too. He might fall. What are you doing on this side of town? I thought I'm the only one on this. Oh, you do what I'm doing. You know, God got both of you. And I'm telling you, stop playing the game. Please don't do that. You want to be holy? Be holy. But let me tell you, you know, you're going to be holy. Because God said, you know, everybody's not strong in every area. That's why he said, let the weak say, I'm strong. So you get, in, you get up here and you pray. You, you go fast a little bit more. You pray a little bit more and say, Lord, strengthen me in this area instead of trying to cover it up. Can't cover up the sin. It's going to catch up with you sooner or later. You know, I'd rather be sooner than later because then there's no time to repent. The Bible said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And it's so simple. And that love toward God, we have not seen him. It means to obey him. And if you love me, you're going to obey every word in this Bible. Ecclesiastes kind of sum it all up in Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion. So there's nothing more to say. and got nothing to say about it. Of the whole matter, fear God and keep his commandments. Yes. For this the whole duty of men. <laughs> I love yes. that scripture. <laughs> That's it. Close the deal.
It's over. So when you follow God's word, you're following God. As brother St. John 1 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The key is, what is God's word? And you need to go out to false churches and come to a true bad of God. I can even, even if I didn't even know all this, goodness, yes, he should have some common sense. How can you still keep living like a devil and then somebody saying you saved? No, because you're all together. The, the birds of a feather flock together. Right. You want to have that itchy ear where I can still do this to still go to heaven? Ooh, how easy it is to be saved. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no, it's not that easy to be saved. It's not. It's the fearful hand be falling into the hands of living God. God's a consuming fire. Oh, my goodness, it's not so easy that, that people think. You have to be on your P's and Q's all day long. The devil's there like a, uh, like a lion to steal, steal your salvation from you, steal your trust in God, steal everything that you got. You got to be looking out for that devil and say, devil, if you, I say, Lord, be in the name of Jesus. Right. He really take everything from you. You know, so you got to be aware of the devil's devices and prophet teaches so much on how to be aware of the devil's devices. And one of the biggest things when God blesses you, you know the devil coming right after you. If you preach a good message, you know you're going to have some problem on the job. Something's going to go wrong. So you should be prepared for this. You should be ready for the day. Say, come on, because I know you're going to do come from this direction or that. It might come to your child or your husband or wife, whatever it may be. It's all nothing in the eyesight of God. Because with the power of the Holy Ghost, you, you conquer it all. He said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So try your little Tricks, you never will win if my mind is stayed on Jesus. Right. Y'all keep you in perfect That's peace, cool. whose mind is stayed on Him. You gotta stay focused on Jesus all the time. You never lose. Ain't nothing right. weak about the Holy Ghost. You know, Great. I thank God for this wonderful panel. Amen. Oh. Thank God for turning the service back there. Amen. I like how someone wanted to mention about having common sense. It, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you can't be a drunkard. Yes. A fornicator using dope, and God still love me in the context of salvation. So I thank God for the panel bringing it out clearly. Amen. The main text, the word of God. Thank God again. Give the panel a big hand. Again, I'll be back. So maybe. Now we all rise to be dismissed. Amen. May Lord watch. May me indeed. While we are absent, one from another. In Jesus' name. Jesus.